of the things that we provide. Both uh, you can get for free by getting an account at our website, a free account at our website. And a lot of the tools I'll show you are tools that we're using here at my company, Trading Trainer, in order to navigate um, the market. So this is a slightly different presentation. I am showing my face just because I like to talk to you guys and you guys can actually see uh, what my office looks like, what I look like, and and some of the excitement I feel when I'm talking about this stuff. Um, the presentation I'm giving today is called Your Guide to Escaping the Pitfalls of Trading. Uh, and this is all about options premium selling, but bringing it down to um, bringing it down to the level that you know anybody can do it, and anybody, especially if, for instance, in my case, uh, I have a new toddler in my life, and the last thing I want to be doing is staying uh, connected to my computer during the day. I would rather be outside playing with my toddler. And so a lot of what I'm talking about with my options premium selling is for end of day traders, stuff that I do after my toddler's gone to bed and I get my all, my, my trading platform set up for the next trading day and then they just run uh, while I'm you know spending the day with my toddler doing what I love to do Beth, best. And it says I am screen sharing, so I think you're seeing this. Let's get into the presentation and I'll try to uh, go at a pretty good uh, pace. Um, please have some pieces of paper and a pen or a pencil. If you're feeling confident, you can use a pen. Or if you're typing out your notes, that's cool too. But I tend to give a lot of bits of information that you can use, even if uh, you know at the end of the presentation, you decide to not take me up because I will be giving you an opportunity to work with me personally. But um, if you decide not to do that, at least you'll learn something in the next, you know, 55 minutes that uh, I present to you. Um, and feel free to put stuff into the chat. I have the chat up on the screen, but I do have it up on this screen versus the screen I'm presenting. And so if you put some thoughts into the chat, please make them complete sentences because I may not get to them because I'm staring at my material uh, I may not get to them till the end. So I want to make sure if I do get to them and I can answer them that they're kind of complete sentences. OK, so that'll be our kind of agreement for today's presentation. All right. So I got some facts for you. First of all, lots of things going on in the world that's pretty uncertain, especially in this year of 2024. You know, what's going to happen with Fed rates? Uh, what about quantitative tightening? What about this presidential race here in the U.S.? What about all of the things happening around the world, uh, whether it be stuff happening China, Taiwan, stuff happening in the Middle East, stuff happening still in the Ukraine, sadly? What about all of the other? It's really kind of, if you think about it, one of the most uncertain times I've lived in, and I'm 51 years old. So, uh you know, I almost think back to when I was a kid and all we had to think about was, you know, the Cold War going on. That made things pretty simple, right? And now all of a sudden there's, you know, all of this craziness going on, pandemic. Um, but the truth is, is when you focus on the markets like I have been for over 25 years now, um, if you play that right, you can be setting yourself up for months, if not years to come. And that's actually the recipe I followed um, and I am following. Because you got to remember one thing, despite the talking heads on TV, you know, talking about sometimes how trillions of dollars are evaporated in the markets, that's not really what happens. You got to know that money just trades hands in the markets. It's not created or destroyed. It just moves from one hand to another. And so the key is making sure you're always on the correct side of the equation, the side where returns are coming to you versus being taken from you. And so one thing I did early on was I reverse engineered because I went to a lot of presentations. And when I first started in the late 90s, the presentations were being held in hotel conference rooms. You'd go for like half a day on Saturday. Next thing you know, you chalked out a chunk of money and you were there all day Sunday. Next thing you know, you were on a plane to some destination spending three or four days 
with somebody. You guys probably remember, some of you probably remember those times when it wasn't as easy as just logging in with your computer. Um, and, you know, a lot of times these presenters were talking about these wins where it's like they're doubling their money in just a couple days. And as I delved into their programs and tried to recreate what they were talking about, what I learned is that that might happen once in a while, but that wasn't the norm. In fact, you know, it, it came out at the end of the year in the wash, and a lot of times you'd be on the losing side. So what I wanted to do is create something more sustainable. And so what I, you know, kind of backed up on is I'm not going to try to focus on, you know, these double your money trades that you have to be, you know, day trading or sitting in front of the uh, trading platform all day and all night. I, I, I surmise that if you earn 6%, you might want to write that down on your money every month in your trades, your investment portfolio is going to double every year. So if you start out with a thousand dollar portfolio, then after 12 months, it could be $2,012 after two years, 4,000, just over 4,000 after five years, just under 33,000. And if you just keep focusing on that 6%, you know, a $1,000 investment 10 years from now would make you a bona fide millionaire. Now, I got to put a disclaimer in there. When I was a kid, a millionaire was like, wow, he's a millionaire. But nowadays, unless you're a 10 millionaire, you know, a millionaires are a dime a dozen right now. So, you know, that's the power of inflation. But something to think about here is focusing on that smaller number, like being able to make digestible, consistent gains. The other thing I like about this is if you do grow your portfolio to about a, a hundred thousand, you you know, that's when it's a good time if you need to, to start taking money. You think about it, if you have a hundred thousand dollar portfolio, that generates just over a hundred thousand dollars every year. If you're still focusing on that 6% target, Compare that to an average salaried income, even after the latest inflation, that's about $87,000 per year. That's for a 60-hour-a-week work week. And what I'm talking about is something where, you know, you could spend your days, you know, doing what you want to be doing, whether it's spending time with family or pursuing a hobby or something like that, pursuing something on that bucket list that you've always wanted to do. And then in the evening... You know, when, right before bed, you know, you, you do your end of day process and, you know, just turn your portfolio into a cash machine that can sustain you. And and it can generate, you know, you, you grow your portfolio to $100,000. That's when it can start generating more than a salaried income. Now, again, I know if you're living on either one of the, you know, left or right coasts of the U.S., uh, your salaries are much higher. I was giving you the average U.S., but still, you get the idea. And I'll tell you, the people who are in my program are actually making more than 6% every month on their portfolio. They're more like making double digits, and they're doubling their portfolios every five months uh, rather than every year. But our aim is that 6% number. You know, Aim for the moon, you might hit the stars. That's kind of our our, our motto. So what are we actually investing in? What I've been talking about is selling Theta Decay Optimized Option Premium. Now, Theta Decay Optimized Option Premium, boy, that's a lot of word salad coming out of my mouth. So let me break it down. It means that we profit on a very consistent variable, time passing by. Now, a lot of people who think about options, they think about how they're you know, leveraged instruments on stocks, ETFs, indexes, generically equities, right? And you can use them that way, but a lot of folks don't realize that options have a lot of other influences on their price. And one of them is time passing by, right? Options are called wasting assets because they have an expiration date. So if you're selling options, you can actually profit on that time passing by. And that's what I do. Time is a very reliable variable right? Uh, versus like trying to guess the direction that a stock or an ETF or an index is going to move over the next month. That's kind of difficult. Or some people know that options, you can play the implied volatility route, right? That's really difficult. Now, those, those trades can give you some real big wins. They could also give you some really big losses. But man, time 
is so consistent. You know, like if the if all of a sudden 60 seconds didn't equal a minute or 60 minutes didn't equal an hour or, you know, 24 hours didn't equal a day and seven days didn't equal a week. If that wasn't true, I'd be worrying about a lot more than my portfolio, right? It means that like something catastrophic has happened to the, the now I'm nerding out like Star Trek, the, the time distance continuum, right? So that, so that would be bad news. So I like the consistency of profiting on just putting my investment in something and letting time go by. So that's what we're doing. We're taking advantage of options and their theta decay potential, right? So let me just make sure you guys were listening. You could type this into the chat. What minimum returns must you make monthly on your portfolio if you're going to more than double it annually? Go ahead and type it in if you if you can. Let's see what you guys think. It just, and I know you might be saying, boy, he's going slow with his presentation. Don't worry. My questions uh, will get more and more difficult as we go. That's absolutely right. Those of you that are saying 6%, that's exactly what I said. So make sure you've got that down. You could actually go do the math. I'm talking about simple interest, by the way, not even comp compounded, you know, compounded monthly, not compounded continuously. Now, a lot of folks, the minute you say options, they jump to risky. And here's where I have to make sure you guys, you know, when you're talking about futures, commodities, um, stamps, right, stocks, indexes, ETFs, typically the way we make money on them is if their price goes up. That's one strategy, buy low, sell high. If you're somewhat of a more active trader, maybe you know how to short things. So you know how to sell to open and buy to close and therefore make money when the, the you know symbol goes down in price. But options allow us to make money when the symbols go sideways, right? They allow us to make money on time passing by. They allow us to even make money when there's increasing fear in the markets as well as increasing confidence, right? So when you're talking about a stock or an ETF or an index, most of the equity family, you can either make money typically in one or two strategies, either when the price goes up or goes down. Options really fill up your tool chest. You know, you get, uh, I, last time the mathematicians looked at all the different option strategies and also by the different options that you populate into those strategies because an option that's near term and at the money is going to operate or, you know, behave much differently than an option that's deep in the money and far out in time. So expiration date and strike price gives the option a whole different personality. There's like 27 different ways to profit on the stock or an ETF or an index symbol versus just one or two ways. So that's why I was immediately attracted to options back in the late 90s was that there were all these ways to take a pattern so long as you could identify what the pattern was doing and find a way to to match the right tool to the to the to the what's happening on the stock. You didn't have to so much have to sift through hundreds of stocks in order to find that one stock, my, my the arm of my chair is vibrating against my desk over here, and it's making a funny sound. So this is a live presentation. Um, all right. So some people are still saying, okay, I get it. Options. In fact, options, by the way, are used by big money investors to hedge against risk they, versus you know something that is risky. So it's how you use them, right? An option, by the way, is a financial instrument that's called a derivative lots of word salad. They're typically bought and sold to hedge risk against stocks, indexes, ETFs. But what we do is actually use them by selling their premium in order to generate an ongoing income. So I like to do monthly options. Some of my program participants like to sell weekly options. Um, with a monthly expiration, it's like the Options always expire on the third Friday of the month. Third Friday of February is not this one coming up in a couple of days. It's actually in a week and two days from now. It's a week from this upcoming Friday. It's my payday, right? And it's very reliable. Every 
month, I sell more options. And every third Friday when they expire, I get my payday. And I'm going to explain more about that and how I've got some tools in order to kind of make this really simple. Let me just, I'm not going to talk too much about me, but I know some of you don't know who I am. I'm AJ. Uh, I've got all these properties out on the web. If you want to jot these things down, I've got a YouTube channel where we post a lot. In fact, we have a Friday YouTube show, live show that we do that you might want to check out. We've got podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, or they don't even call it Twitter anymore. It's called X. Uh, these are all shortcuts, by the way. I've written a a uh, boatload of articles. Uh, I've also written a lot of technical white papers if you like to nerd out. And you're welcome to give me a call. Uh, you can call me at 970-266-8146 whenever you want to jibber jabber. Uh, I'm right there for you. And if you're at any of my social media platforms, you know, do me a solid. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. That always helps us along to get our message out further. Um, I founded a company called Trading Trainer back in 2003. They call me the world's most disciplined options trader. I actually think behind the scenes, they call me the world's most laziest options trader. I like to think of myself as the most efficient one. I like, I really guard my time. I like, I have a bucket list. I have a family and a toddler new to me. And, you know, who, who would have thought that in my 50s I'd have a toddler, but I do. And so, you know, my time is very valuable to me. And I'm not going, when, when I left my job at Hewlett Packard in 2005, the last thing I wanted to do was create another nine to five job for myself. So I've been managing my own portfolio since 2005, taking care of myself and my family since then by just working on um, um, uh, value. By the way, thank you for the comment about how young I look. Uh, I wish I felt that young sometimes. <laughs> Published, I, I do take care of myself. Uh, that's one of the other things about not having to show up and punch a time clock since 2005 is I think the minute you don't have to do that, uh, you, you know, and you can start focusing on spending a couple hours in the gym every day, and you can, uh, uh, you know, do kind of baby yourself, really, because you don't have to um, report to somebody else and trade your time for money. Um, enough about that. Uh, sometimes you'll see this uh, home study course that I did about a decade and a half ago. You'll find that on a lot of very successful option traders um, bookcases. Um, here's one thing I'd like you to take notes on, because I really have thought through what broke me from being a beginner trader in 1997 to somebody who about four or five years later started to show some success. And I'd like to shortcut that for you. I don't want you to take the five years of trial and error that I took um, and, and the amount of money I lost in losing trades. So here, here's what I'd like you to do. Number one, stop chasing shiny objects, right? Settle on one type of investing and learn it really well, right? I chose options trading, right? Because that fit my lifestyle at the time when I was getting in there. I was a newbie at, uh, a, a, you know, some dot coms. I was living in the Bay Area of California, really involved in the tech industry, uh, in the marketing departments of tech industries. And um, yeah. Uh, options fit for me because I, I I wanted to make sure I could do something at the end of work. And now that really fits for me because I like my days free. I don't like to be sitting in front of computers or stuck in my chair. I like to go play outside. So find out what works with your life and not your dream life, but what works for your life right now. For me, it was options investing, but you know, you might find that you know, staying up at night doing the Forex is your thing, right? Whatever it is, stick with it because I know there's great teachers out there in every discipline and in every investment vehicle. So find one and then learn it really well and master it because you'll come like to come, you'll come to some events and you'll see all these different things and people will woo you left and right. Uh, especially people who have, you know, a savvy in marketing. And um, it's easy to get off track, like start something here and then, 
oh, I'm excited about this, or this guy promised me this, or this person promised me that. And you never master anything. You're you, So stop chasing shiny objects. That's number one. And I had to learn that the hard way. Number two, hire a mentor who is currently doing what you want to do. And when I say that, I have hired so many people in the past and I find out after I've chucked over a lot of money that they're no longer doing what they're teaching, right? They haven't done it in five, 10, even longer years, right? That I always try to find somebody now when I'm hiring somebody, I'm, I'm a little bit more savvy who is doing right now in the present, they're dealing with the present situation, what you want to do. And the other component is, is I make sure, especially now more than ever, that they know how to teach. Because I have had instructors who absolutely knew what they were doing, but boy, oh boy, they could not convey to me in a way that I could understand what it is they were doing. They were like, just look, she do this, do this. And it just wouldn't sink in. So make sure not only do uh, are they doing what you want to be doing in the present and they're successful at it, but that they know how to teach, right? That's another thing. So in the education world, that's called learning by guided discovery. And it's much easier to do than trial and error. So that's number two. And I learned that the hard way. Number three, I'd like you to join an investment group, right? I don't want you to do this on your own. I want you to join an investment group and, and ideally an investment group where they're doing the same things you are, right? And one of the reasons why I want you to do this is so that you can leverage with pride, right? In grade school, in, in you know, they call that cheating, right? And I don't understand why there is such an emphasis on that being bad because it really screws kids up. Because when I worked at Hewlett Packard, you know what we would do? We would buy a Canon or an Epson printer that was all of a sudden really popular and we would take it all apart and find out what made it so good. And then we would incrementally improve something with our own technology and then sell the printer, you know, that we, in other words, we leveraged with pride. And that happens in the real world all the time. That's how, as a society, we progress. We take something that somebody else did and we build on it, right? So I want you to join an investment group. And if somebody finds a great symbol to sell premium against, you should sell premium against it. It's not bad to look over somebody's shoulder. And by the way, if you find one, you shouldn't mind if somebody else does it. So I want you to leverage with pride. And I also want that group to hold you accountable. You know, make sure you're doing whatever process you need to be doing in order to be a good, good investor, a good trader. Um, so there's so many reasons to do this in a group think as a tribe rather than doing it as a solo loan cowboy. I don't think it's even possible to do it. I tried and it wasn't until I formed my own investment group that I started to see success at this. So don't do this as a lone ranger. And finally, surround yourself with like-minded investors because boy, when I started trading options, I had so many people in my life telling me that options were risky and that I was going to, and by the way, these people were, you know, by all intents purposes, just over broke who were giving me unsolicited advice, but still those voices echo in your head. And when you have a losing trade, for instance, that's the first thing that echoes in your head and you start to talk yourself out of this way of being successful, right? Instead, you want to have people who, you know, can boost you up when you have a losing trade and who will celebrate with you when you have winning trades. So surround yourself with like-minded investors. Naysayers will always can try to convince you that you're wrong, but surround yourself with people that will celebrate your wins and will talk to you when you're having. So please write down those four things because this is exactly what I did after spending four or five years hitting myself in the wall. And if I even shared with you the amount of money that I lost in, um, you know, in that four or five years, it was astronomical. And it good, was a good thing that, you know, I had a six figure job in Silicon Valley because all those gains I made pretty much went to my, you know, I call it my graduate degree of, of life of investing. So 
These are ways to shortcut to crack the code. Last thing I want to tell you about me is that I do have a foundation. The company I started, Trading Trainer, all the profits we get from to, uh, from educating people that people pay us to you know, be part of our education program, go to my foundation. Um, I actually personally live off the gains that I make on my own trading and my own portfolio, and so do the people affiliated with my company, the coaches. Um, my foundation is a lot of our focuses. It's, it takes historically underserved inner city kids off the street. We teach them how to invest the same type of investing that I teach other program participants. It's very cool. Uh, we started it in 2003 when I was based outside of Denver. Uh, it has since moved. It's now part of something that we do with the CBOE and it, it caters to the south side of Chicago. So if you're ever wondering you know, what your dollars are. If you were to ever be part of our programs or buy any of the stuff from Trading Trainer, you know that it's going here. And I'm very proud of that. That's going to live on way past my existence, right? Back to the topic of selling programs. So I focus on four simple transactions. I like to write covered calls. I like to write covered puts. A lot of people don't they, they've heard of or they've done some covered call writing, but very few people know about covered put writing. Put writing. This is flipping the covered call upside down. And by the way, I would take that writing covered puts and um, get that under your belt, especially for 2024. We're we're doing a lot of covered put writing right now in my my program. It's one of the things that the market is telling us to do. So if you're not familiar with that strategy, you want to go research it. If there's stuff out on the web, or if you want to come to my program and learn about it, that's fine. But covered put writing should be in your arsenal. Also, we like to take the covered calls and we like to what I call supercharge them. Uh, we write them instead of against stocks, we write them against leaps. And if you're a nerd, you know, somebody like me who's into option trading, that's a variation of bull call diagonal debit spreads. If you're not a nerd, just think of it as covered call writing on steroids, right? And we also really like to do the same thing with the covered puts. We can take the covered puts and we can leverage them. These are called bare put diagonal debit spreads or a variation of them. So those are the four strategies that are the ones I target for selling premium that create this ongoing income for them. One thing you might mark if you've written down those uh, strategies is that covered calls, the bull call diagonal debit spreads and the bear put diagonal debit spreads are cash trades. Those work in cash accounts. And I'm talking about if you've got some retirement accounts, if you've got IRAs or Roth IRAs, traditional or, or Roth, man, we do this all the time. And some of those folks in Canada with your RRSPs, similar, right? So that's kind of cool. You don't need to have a margin trade. Now for this other guy, the covered puts, please mark it or put an asterisk, as, asterisk by it. This one does require a margin account. So you should know that in advance. What's nice is, is of course, is that uh, you can get the same uh, benefit Let's see if I can do this right. I want to just get myself a pen. You can get the same benefit of writing a covered put by doing a bare put diagonal debit spread. So if you don't have a margin account, you can still get the same benefit by doing this guy down here. So it doesn't hurt to learn them both. And just know if you're doing this and you want uh, an account like that, then it, it works out. I keep using the term option premium. So just know that whenever you look on the big board and you're watching an option price go up and down, that option is actually, that option price is composed of two components, one that's called in the money and one that's called the premium. In the money also, again, if you're nerdy like me, you might call it intrinsic value and the premium you might call extrinsic value. Some people even call the premium time value. I stay away from that term and, you know, excuse me for being, you know, particular, but there's a lot more that goes into the premium value than just time. So I kind of uh, 
don't use time value, but that's often what we're re referring to here. So we're talking about really focusing on the premium component. So here's an example. I actually pulled these prices from today's close. Lyft, you know, the, the ride sharing company, they closed at $12.45 a share today. If I bought some Lyft and then turn around and sold that option that expires a week from this Friday called the Lyft February 16th expiration with the $12.50 strike price, if I sold those calls back, I'd get an immediate $1.12 back, right? Almost like um, a credit or it would reduce my break even price from 1245 to whatever that is it's like a discount on buying the stock i would get that immediately and that option acts like an expiring coupon because that value that premium component of that option will by definition go to zero on february 16th there's no getting around it right and so I'm selling it for $1.12, and then it's going to wind up expiring worthless, the premium component. It's going to create for me what I call an instant dividend. Now, it's not an official dividend, but it kind of acts like one. It gives me a, a payback, and because options are sold in lots of 100, and you know there's 100 option shares in every contract, and options are sold in contracts, I would make $112 by selling one contract. So for every contract I sold back, I'd get another 112 credit to my account. So let's run through the scenarios. Number one, Lyft might close above that 1250 strike price a week from this Friday. If that happens, I bought Lyft for 1245. It would get exercised, meaning they'd take my stock and they'd give me the 1250. So I would make about a nickel profit. But don't forget, I already collected $1.12 up front. So when you add those together, my total profit on this trade would be $1.17. That would basically be 10.3% ROI. And I didn't even hold this for a month. This would be for about, what, 10 days, a little less than 10 days, nine days. It's the 7th of February. But what if Lyft is flat? What if it just goes sideways? And this is, by the way, what I like. I like it when the symbol goes sideways because I buy this thing for $12.45 per share. I get $1.12 back. And because it goes sideways, it expires worthless. I get to keep that $1.12 and I get to keep the stock. And guess what I get to do? Besides already accruing 9.9% .9 ROI, I also get to do it again next month and next month. In fact, I search out these boring stocks that are going sideways that you couldn't trade any other way. I search those things out so that I can just have one stock that sits there and then I sell premium once a month, one trade a month, and allow it to just expire, do it again. And I create an income on these things. It's almost like renting renting something out, renting your stock out, but it's not like when you rent out a piece of real estate and you have to deal with tenants, trash, and toilets, I think is the three T's. Instead, you're just renting out your stock. It's kind of cool. Now, of course, what happens if Lyft drops by February 16? Now, the scoop is, is that I'm going to take a couple moments, probably in about five minutes from now, to show you how I can reduce my risk on return even further but even built into this strategy, if I buy Lyft for $12.45, get my $1.12, I've reduced my break-even price to $11.33. In other words, Lyft would have to drop all the way down below my break-even price before I'm even in the red. So even inherent in this strategy is somewhat of a defense against the stock going against the initial position, right? So... I will, like I promise, I'll show you a way that I hedge this even further, but just know that there's this, what I call profit buffer built into this strategy. Now, before I go any further, that was all theoretical, right? I want to show you on my spreadsheet here. This is a trade worksheet that we use part of our program. I want to show you an actual trade on ticker SLV. This is the silver ETF. 
that we started in November. We bought silver shares, 500 shares at $21.40. So it's roughly a little bit over a $10,000 trade. And then the first month, December 5th, we sold our premium 46 cents a uh, option share. We sold five contracts and it expired worthless. We did it again, January 2nd, uh, 37 cents a share. And then on the third Friday, it just expired worthless. We didn't have to do anything. So this is like one transaction, one trade per month, right? February 1st, we did it again. Now I'm showing you um, in yellow here, in, in bright yellow, highlighted yellow, what would happen next Friday if indeed we got exercised. If we got exercised, I mean, we'd walk away with, you know, 5.4% ROI, which isn't bad, this isn't stellar, but it's still some gains. But if we don't get exercised, then I'm going to just keep selling premium again and again, just collecting that ongoing monthly income. And again, you could do this weekly if if you like, um, weekly options. I focus, I'll tell you, I focus on the monthly options because of liquidity. My portfolio has grown quite large. And so I need to make sure that there is a lot of liquidity in the options that I'm trading. The weekly ones uh, don't have as much to support me, but to support a lot of my program participants, some of them like to really delve into doing this weekly. So I wanted to show you, and I want you to notice, by the way, the dates of the trades, meaning I'm not doing it all on one day. This is called lagging into the position. And it actually kind of supercharges our returns. And I have a tool to show you exactly what day to do this on. Um, and, and, you know, this tool potentially could be one that you can download for free uh, if if you want to. So I've got an indicator for that. But let me just uh, blast through the rest of this presentation, and then I'll show you my tool suite. Um, all right. First of all, I want to make sure you are paying attention. Uh, what do you think investing by selling premium creates? This is a little bit of a review here. Is it an instant dividend, a discount on a security, a profit buffer? Does it act like an expiring coupon? By the way, I said answer all that apply because it could definitely be more than one. So what do you think? You could type it into the chat. Well, if you were paying attention and I'm don't slight no worries if you weren't, but I said all of them. I said it was an instant dividend. I said it was a profit buffer. It acted like an expiring coupon and it behaved as a discount on a security. So if you were thinking all of them, you're absolutely right. Kind of a trick question. Now, I'm going to ask you a question kind of leading the witness here, uh, and then I'll explain it. How do you think we can lower our investment, increase our returns, and even convert a margin trade into a cash trade? What should we do? Should we sell out in time options? Should we replace the security with options trading at parity? Should we give up? This is dumb. We should just buy mutual funds with our invested portfolio. Or is what I'm talking about not even possible? What do you think? We'll see what you guys type in. Yes. Yes, you guys have totally been paying attention. Although I see one person typing in who might actually be um, one of our program participants. That's awesome. Yes, replace the security with options trading at parity. That's exactly right. So what are options trading at parity? I keep saying that word. Just know that this thing that I keep calling option premium, it's the most when an option is at the money. But when we go deep in the money, the option has very little premium. It's almost completely intrinsic value. Oh, my God. AJ has gone back into the uh, talking uh, word salad, hasn't he? Well, let's see if we can make that simpler. In other words, this deep in the money option, it actually winds up behaving just like the stock or the ETF or the index. Dollar for dollar, meaning if the stock goes up 50 cents, so will this deep in the money option but it's going to be at a cheaper price. 
you won't have to spend the $12, the $15 a share. You maybe spend half or even less than half of that, right? Now, options have expiration dates. So if I'm going to substitute a stock symbol with an option symbol, what expiration date? Well, this comes to, you know, just looking at how long these trades tend to last before you get exercised or before you get bailed out. We buy our back month option far enough out in time so that you could sell those premiums and have it basically end organically instead of having all of a sudden like you have a piece of real estate and you've been renting it out to tenants for years and all of a sudden it just disintegrates and you can't rent it anymore. No, you'd rather have one of your tenants buy you out of the house, right? You'd rather have you would you don't want the house to just disintegrate. So that's what we try to do. We try to go far enough. And it turns out that magic number is at least eight months out in time. At least eight months out. And we tend to levitate towards these things called leaps. These are the options that expire every third Friday of the January. So there's like a 2025 leap. There's a 2026 leap just because they have the liquidity. It's not a hard and fast rule, but we tend to gravitate towards the leaps. So, okay, let's go through our example on Lyft. So you could buy that Lyft stock like we showed last time or using tonight's end of day prices, $6.88, that's all it costs to buy that Lyft September 20th $6 call. And that September is pretty much close to that eight-month target that we're looking for. So that's a little bit over half the price, but now it's going to act just like the Lyft stock. So let's run through, um, let's th run through the example. So instead of buying the stock, I'm going to buy this substitute option and only but pay 688. I'm still going to get the dollar 12 back. It's still going to act like an instant dividend. It's still going to act as a discount now on this cheaper covering position, right? And it's still going to act like an expiring coupon. So what happens if Lyft closes above 1250 on on February 16th? Well, we paid $6.88 for this substitute option. We're going to get $6.50 back. Now, you might say, where does that $6.50 come from? When you do a substitute option, you're going to basically take the difference between the option you sell and the option you bought. So we, we bought the $6 option. We sold the $12.50 option. So if it gets exercised, we get that difference. That's why it's called a spread. In this case, it's called a diagonal debit spread. So that's where the 650 comes from. So if that's the case, oh no, we end up with a 38 cent loss. But don't forget, we collected a dollar 12 up front. And so that results in a 75 cent per share profit. Or because this is so much less than the initial stock purchase, we wind up walking away with 12.9% ROI. Not bad. But now what happens if it's flat? Now, remember, this is the ideal case. We buy that, uh, that substitute option. We sell that premium. The premium expires worthless. We walk away with 19.5% ROI. And we're going to do it again and again and again. Finally, don't forget about that built-in profit buffer. The back month option, that substitute option would have to go all the way down to 576 before we're even in the red. Now, don't forget, I am about to show you how I'm going to reduce the risk on return even further. But just know, even in this diagonal debit spread, there is a built-in profit buffer, right? So let me show you, again, I like to show some real trades. That was more of a theoretical trade. This one on AT&T that we started also in November, on November 20th. So instead of buying AT&T, we bought the AT&T June 2024. Now, this was back in November. We bought the $10 call. 
We paid $6.05 per option share. We bought 20 contracts, so 20 times 100, so 2,000 shares. We spent about 12000 a little over $12,000. The first time we sold premium, we got $0.13. Cents. Expired worthless. Next time, $0.38. Cents. You can see in this column, it keeps track of our break-even price on the share. And it even takes advantage, it takes th this particular worksheet also factors in what my commissions are. Next time we sold for 38 cents. This most recent time on February 2nd, we sold for 22 cents. And I'm showing what might happen. And I apologize, I didn't update this uh, correctly. There we go. What might happen a week from this Friday when options expire in February. Uh, either it's going to expire worthless and I'm going to do it again like it did the past couple of times. Or if I get exercised, I get the $8. So that's going to be the difference between the $18 strike price and the $10 strike price. So that I get that spread and I'll walk away with 43.7% ROI after three months. Now that's more like it, right? The that That's a trade that we can really get behind from November 20th to now to get 43.7% ROI, or if it keeps going, it's going to be even better than that. So just a reminder, you earn 6% on your money. Your investment will more than double every year. Um, last question, how can we drastically reduce our risk on return? What do you think? What would you do? Would you sell half as much option premium? Is that your answer? Should we focus on options that are farther out in time? Should I collar the investment by marrying a protective option? Or is what we're talking about not even possible? What do you think? A lot of you are getting it. Let's collar it. So I want to show you an example of a real trade that we did. This is one that, I'll, I'll be honest, it lasted 14 months. That's out of the ordinary. Typically, my trades last about five, six, maybe seven months. This one lasted 14 months. But uh, I'm only going to show you the first couple of months on this one because it's like textbook, and it, it's just beautiful. Let's see if I can find the uh, trade worksheet here. There it is. This was on Pan American Silver. This is a mining company. So we bought the stock for $34.73 per share. And then a few days later after buying the stock, I got my indicator that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. And I sold my premium. I made $1.76 a share. And then I turned around and I bought a protective option. I went about three to six months out in time. And I went ahead and went a little bit in the money, right? Or out of the money, I should say. Um, and I paid $4.75. Now, fast forward to the expiration date, it expired worthless, right? So I got to keep this $1.76 and I kept the stock so I could do it the next month. But now I'm left with that protective option. So I looked for the best opportunity when the indicator told me to go. And I was able to sell it back. So this is really, really cool because a lot of folks who use options to hedge their trades, their options wind up being a form of protection and they wind up costing them money. But because we time when we buy the protective option so that we only buy it when we need it and then we sell it back in the options world, it's called rolling it out. We actually during the time we own it, it protects us. But when we sell it back, we actually sell it back for more than we bought it for, right? Timing is key. And so that's really cool. We're still only doing like one or two trades per month. But we've added in this layer where now when we have premium sold, we've got protection in place. And then when we don't need protection anymore, we can go ahead and sell it back oftentimes at a profit. It adds two sources of income every expiration, every cycle, instead of one. So in addition to the $1.76, 
uh, I made back a dollar fifteen when I rolled out my protective option. I did it the next month, right? I made a dollar forty seven. I bought the protective option at the same time for three dollars and a penny. The premium expired worthless, and I sold back or rolled out the protective option for three sixty two. I made sixty one cents. So I made on that month a dollar forty seven and an additional sixty one cents. That's like frosting on the cake, folks. And it's really cool because what we turned, which is usually a cost to the economics of a trade, is now a profit to the economics of a trade. And I just kept doing that over and over for about 14 months. The other thing I want you to point out, I want to point out is notice I'm protecting, uh, if you look over here at the strike price of the protective puts I'm using, they're at $34. Notice how quickly my position's break-even price went below $34. Now, what does that mean? Well, if my trade is trading below my break-even price and my protective price is above that, it means that I've created a risk-free trade. In other words, if the trade goes against me and I get stopped out, I'm still going to be walking away with more profit than what the trade's going for, right? So even if the trade goes, a lot of people like to ask me, well, what's your win-loss ratio? Well, because I'm trading time passing by, it only takes me about one or maybe two cycles to have a trade that's risk-free. And then it's all winners from there. So the key for me is not about you know making sure the stock goes in my direction. The key for me is, staying in the trade one or two cycles until it becomes risk-free and then the stock can go for me or against me and it doesn't matter because I'm going to make money either way. I actually have that in a graph, this exact trade in a graph. It's right here. So a couple things you'll notice here is that's my break-even line and the gray line represents what happens if the stock goes against you versus what happens if the stock goes for you. What happens if you get stopped out versus exercised, right? So as you can see, within the first to second month, that's when all of a sudden, even if the stock goes against me and I get stopped out, I'm still going to make money. In fact, if you look at the average time that our trades last, which is five months, if I, the position goes for me and I get exercise, I'm going to make 65%. If it goes against me and I get stopped out, I'm still going to make 50%. So I don't care if the stock goes for me or against me because so long as I've been in there, right, I'm going to make money, right? That's a beautiful thing. Right here is how long it takes for the stock to become risk-free. It was between the first and second month of holding the position. So I really like these type of trades. Again, I'm trading the time passing by more than I'm trading the direction of the stock. So just to make sure you guys got that, what do we have when our cost basis, our break-even price is less than our protective bailout price? Risk-free investment, losing trade, too much complexity, a pipe dream. You guys are getting it. I'm looking at the chat. And again, I want to emphasize just one more time. You'll notice, you might say it's too complex, but in reality, I'm doing only two trades a month. I love it when day traders who like do three or four trades in a day try to tell me that I'm doing something that's too complex. I'm trading once or twice a month, folks. And I look, at, I look every evening, if I don't have an arrow on my chart, I close my laptop and I wait until the next evening. Talk about, you know, efficient and, you know, dare I say, lazy. All right. So here are the three steps. Buy or short an underlying security, stock, ETF, index, or even better, buy a substitute option trading at parity. Then sell a near-term at-the-money option for its premium value. We call that an instant dividend and a profit buffer. And then collar this whole thing with a married option that is three to six months out in expiration 
to protect your investment. Write those three steps down. And basically, you just do two and three over and over every month. That's it. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Now, here is a graph of a sideways choppy stock. And if you look at like the number of equities out there, the number of them that are going sideways choppy, especially boring stocks like the one I'm into, is actually quite high. It's actually more unusual to find a symbol that's trending up or down. There's always symbols going sideways choppy. And that's the ones I search out, these boring stocks that are going sideways choppy. What I like about it is we, we say we leg into them. In other words, buy, if you're going to do a covered call, you buy your underlying or you buy that substitute call option trading at parity, you put your stop loss in place. When it reverses, you sell your near-term call and you buy your protective put. Your near-term call expires on its expiration date. That's when you roll back your put option. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. We didn't talk about the covered put, even though I told you you should go research that on your own because you're going to need it this year. But if you're doing a covered put, you just do it in reverse. You start at the top of the sideways choppy channel. That's when you short the underlying stock or buy a option trading at parity. Put your stop loss in place. When you're at the bottom of the channel, that's when you sell the near-term put option, buy the protective call, the near-term put option expires, you sell back the call, protective call, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, Twi two, two transactions a month. Now, how would you like to never miss any of these picks, minimize the amount of time you spend away from your loved ones, and have the support you need whenever you need it. Because that's really what it's all about, right? It's about saving time, creating clarity, and getting the results. All of you right now, by the way, should go over to tradingtrainer.com and you should uh, follow the links on the website to get over to the member site and sign up for a free account. You should definitely go do that because you'll get access to some of our software tools. You'll get access to my white papers. You'll get access to all the nerd stuff that uh, you might need to get further along in this premium selling. But I'm going to take a couple moments, the last moments here, tell you a little bit about my materials and my training and the tools because that's what this is all about, the tech wizards, see if they might be a fit for you. This is for someone who doesn't want to pay for multiple data subscription, wants everything they need in one place, doesn't want to miss any opportunities, wants to spend more time doing other things, really take inventory of yourself and see if that matches. You don't want to be doing this alone, and you do want some step-by-step -step instructions. In other words, this is someone who wants to get consistent and reliable results. I, I'm skipping over the testimonials because I am seeing that I'm running out of time. Listen, what you get when you are part of our program is you'll immediately get access to this members-only web portal that I'm showing you on the screen where we've got tutorials, but even more, we've got our once-a-month live lecture series and all of the replays of it since going all the way back to 2007, right? So if you want to really, you know, delve into nerd stuff, you can uh, delve in there. We also do a weekly workshop. This is where I get on the line with everybody on Thursdays. We're going to have our weekly workshop tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And we all get up on there. People bring their candidates that they think would be good candidates to set up on. And. We give our feedback as to are these candidates viable. So people love coming to these workshops just to see what our thoughts are about the candidates they've found. And, of course, we've got screeners. You can see right here screeners built in that help you find some candidates, but some people find them on their own, whatever. They bring them and we evaluate them. And then what we do 
is we plan them out together so everybody can trade them. In fact, everybody has access to a very cool planning tool. I'm showing it to you right here. It's built into Excel. It's also built into um, uh, Google Sheets. So pretty much anybody who has access to the internet has access to it. And we basically fill out this wizard. You can see this one's already filled out. It takes you through the questions one by one and you just fill it out. You could also, if you get better at it, jump to just the summary page and fill it out that way. I, it takes me about two to three minutes to fill these out. On our workshop, we talk it through, so it takes more like 15 minutes to fill it out. But look at what spits out. It spits out a trade plan for each one of those strategies that we talked about. And the trade plan is actually personalized to you based on the size of your portfolio, the type of risk appetite you might have, as well as how you like to calculate your risk, right? Do you like to calculate your risk just on the initial investment or is it after premium is sold? You can choose those things and then it creates and personalizes your trade plan and tells you exactly what to do at each step of the way. So then you might come over here and say, well, when do I know a bottom is found? Well, we give everybody, and right now they're in Thinkorswim, but we're having these indicators also translated into the other trading platforms. The next one coming out is Metastock, and then we've got TradingView, we've got NinjaTrader, all of those are all queued up. But you can see here, this is that same ticker, NEM, that we just showed you the trade plan on. This trade plan was actually created just last Thursday on uh, Newmont Mining. And you can see the arrows tell you exactly on the evening when you should trade it the next day. And we give everybody these indicators. This is the Thinkorswim platform as part of Charles Schwab. Um, it's a very popular options trading platform that a lot of people get access to. And that's uh, where we've written our initial indicators. You just up download this indicator and we've actually got in the works uh, indicators that'll tell uh, automatically tell the trading platform during the next trading day, whether or not it should pull the trigger, right? So it actually automates this stuff, right? All built into the people who participate in our program. It's very cool. And so let's let's kind of estimate here. You got your video tutorials to get you going. You got your monthly lecture series and all of their re replays going back to 2007. Think about what that's worth to you. You've got the screeners, right that will you know sift out and find these stock tickers for you uh etfs and indexes as well you've got those planning tools you've got the indicators we actually also have some indicators that are available and that's going to be a bonus so i'm not going to let the cat out of the bag right now weekly live workshops and their replays a lot of people like those weekly workshops so much they come and they they basically you know leverage with pride and they trade what we plan out and what's funny is is you know they get to the end of the program and they re up and so when they re up I call them I'm like didn't you get didn't you get it why are you re upping and they're like yeah we got it but why would we give up the fact that every Thursday you give us another trade plan to follow why would we want to go do that on our own it's like you're spoon feeding us and I, I can't I can't argue with them. We also have a process called trade review where you send in your trade plans and we will, myself and my coaches will actually dissect it. And before you do put any money towards it, we'll make sure we tell you whether we think it's a yay or a nay. And if we think it's a nay, we'll tell you why. So what is all that worth to you doing that as a program? Well, I also have a double your money back guarantee. So join the program. And if after six months, you're not making money at this program, I and you're not off doing your own thing, you didn't get distracted or you're doing something different than what I'm telling you to do, you know, show me that you're not making money at it and I'll give you your price of tuition times two. And I've had this guarantee in place since 2007. It's how confident I am that when you do this program, you'll actually be successful at it. 
So a double your money back guarantee. Here's a bonus for being part of the Synergy Trader Program uh, speaking event. I want to put you in touch with one of my coaches. This is a great time. Usually our coaching program, this is a hands-on program, costs, I mean, if you can think about one-on-one -on -one coaching, it costs a lot, a lot. But I'm going to give you one session with them, and this is a bonus. Not everybody gets this, where they're going to talk to you about where you are right now and where you want to be, and they'll help you plan out the progression from now to then, right? And it's very, they've been in your steps, right? They, they've been in your place. And so they can help you so that you're not just guiding blindly, right? You'll actually have a destination and you'll know what you'll have to do. So that's a bonus. There's one other bonus that's not in my slides. We have a suite of paid indicators, indicators that people, even my program participants are buying from me. So for you guys who are part of this presentation and I've coded a special promo code so that I know it's you, I will give you access to those paid for indicators. I won't make you pay for them, right? And I'm selling them for $97. So that's an additional bonus. So what is that all worth to you if we add the double your money back guarantee, the bonus strategy for it with my coach and these indicators, right? These $100 worth of indicators for your trading platform. What's that all worth to you? Cuz I'll tell you this program it's 6 months and it costs $597. If you go to my website right now and you click on the program, the Instant Income Calendar program, it's 600 bucks. That's a flat fee. It's for six months of access. Do I think it's gonna take you six months? No. Usually it takes people somewhere between three and maybe five, six, seven weeks to kind of internalize the process. So then why do I give you six months? Because I want you to come and I want you to leverage those Thursday trades. And if you can't be there live, I want you to watch the replay and take those trades, right? Take them in your paper trading log till you feel comfortable, then take them in your real money log and be successful. I also want you to have access to me to be able to send me your trades so I can review them. I want to spend six months with you repeating the process over and over so you can internalize it, right? That's why I want you to do it for six months, not because it's going to take you six months to learn this, right? Flat fee, six months. But again, I'm just stacking the bonuses on this evening, folks. I'm not going to charge you $597. i am going to charge you $100 off. So four ninety seven, dollars right? And this is how you do it. You go to optioninvesting.org forward slash synergy. In fact, I even have that up on my screen over here. You go optioninvesting.org forward slash synergy. And you have to type in this promo code. Otherwise, you won't get the free indicators. You won't get all the bonuses. The promo code is 100OFF. And it's got to be capital OFF. 100OFF. In fact, let me go ahead and click on the button. Get started now. Let me, oh, I'm going to put in uh, my email ad address. There you go. Show me the special offer. Oh, gosh, please wait. I just want to make sure my programmers put in the right code. So here's that $597, $597 pro program. Put in the 100 capital O F F. I'm going to cross my fingers that my programmers good 497 and you've been coded. It'll make sure you get all the freebies that I talked about. So then you just take it from there. So again, the information, if you're interested in, in doing this, if this is part of your, your focus optioninvesting.org forward slash synergy. And the promo code is 100 capital O capital F capital F. And I will disable this promo code probably Monday. So I'll let you have the weekend if you want to think about it. And if you're having any problems with the order form or you want to talk to me about it, um, I know that other people said that they're the only ones who talk to people. But if you call that number, 970-266-8146, 
you'll be able to talk to me about this. So I would love to talk to you. Um, otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow at our program workshop. That's all I got, David.